Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton on this Saturday, Saturday, December 17th, uh, as we are uh, officially into the snows of winter, even though technically winter is still three, four days away, right? December 20, 20th, 21st, depending on uh, where you, where the solstice falls this, this uh, winter, the winter solstice, which is when the when the earth has tilted away from the sun, uh, the north northern part of the of the planet has tilted away from the sun the furthest. Uh, so the sun is hitting the lowest south. Now it's summer in South America, right? That'll be the summer solstice for for those in the below the equator. Uh, but above the equator here, uh, we'll be coming up here on the on the uh, winter solstice. So I uh, <clears throat> kind of. I don't know if it amazes me, but it's it, it is always kind of amazing that 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 um, as as we move towards the winter solstice, um, we get more winter weather and things are are colder. But it seems like once the solstice happens and we begin moving back the other way towards springtime, um, winter gets deeper. You know, uh, I guess it kind of goes with that that old saying: "It's always coldest before the dawn," right? Um, but the, as the as we go from that solstice back towards, we get January and February, which are usually the coldest months, at least here in the in, in the Wisconsin and Michigan areas. And then and then March is quite often a very snowy month, depending on <clears throat> depending on what the weather is doing. But that's that's quite often we get a lot of we get the snowfalls that are are dumps uh, in March. Now we just had a snowfall; it was supposed to be a dump. I mean. The original forecast was 10 to 15 inches on um, Wednesday and Thursday. And, and what did we get? We got five. Um, we might have, with the snow that went on uh, Thursday and Friday, we, we we might have gotten up to seven inches now um, on the ground. I, I haven't gone out and measured it. Of course, you know, it, it, now it's been shoveled and everything. So how do you, how do you measure it? But, well, good morning. And it sounds like we're getting more today. Now, I, the uh, to the south of us, um, it sounds like more. We might have an inch of flurries, inch, inch and a half of flurries today. It sounds like Wausau, though, only half hour south of down where, where Debbie and Ann and Grant are. Uh, we <clears throat> They might get two inches yet. But, I, you know, the weather maps say that the forecast is one thing. Then you look at the radar and the storms are just dissipating and going away. So, I they're guessing. They're making estimates. And they don't. They don't know. They love to push towards Snowmageddon, though, and make it sound bad. Anyway, good morning. We have a commemoration today. Daniel the prophet and the three young men. Right, Daniel, who is, uh, uh, well, here. Let me just share this with you. Daniel the prophet and the three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, among the leaders of the people in Judah who were taken into captivity in Babylon. Uh, even in that foreign land, they remained faithful to the one true God in their piety, prayer, and life, an account of which steadfast faithfulness in the face of pagan idolatry. The three young men were thrown into the fiery furnace from which they were saved by the Lord and emerged unharmed. That's in Daniel chapter 3. Similarly, similarly Daniel was thrown into the pit of lions from which he also was saved, Daniel chapter six, blessed in all their blessed in all their endeavors by the Lord, and despite the hostility of some, Daniel and the three young men were promoted to positions of leadership among the Babylonians. To Daniel in particular, the Lord revealed the interpretation of dreams and signs that were given to King Nebuchadnezzar and King Belshazzar. And to Daniel himself, the Lord gave visions of the end times. And so. Uh, today we commemorate Daniel. Dan yeah, you, you, to really to understand Revelation. I think I'm working my way into a cold again because my head feels plugged up this morning. To work in order to work your way through the book of Revelation, which is actually the New Testament reading paired with what we're reading from Isaiah right now. But in order to really get a grip on that, you almost have to read Daniel and work your way through that. Um, and then read Isaiah and, and work your way through that. And then go to the Gospel of St. John and, and understand 
what John does when he writes, the, the imagery and, and his word selections and, and what he's saying, uh, and then his letters, John's letters. And then go back and look at Daniel one more time um, to understand what God foretold would come in the end times um, in the Old Testament, uh, and check a few chapters of Isaiah out again, and then, with great trepidation, approach the book of Revelation, having an understanding of everything that came before it as you go into it. Um, <clears throat> but today we, we do remember Daniel, um, uh, who, who became essentially the right hand of the king in Babylon uh, for the benefit of God's people there, and the three young men who also were elevated to positions of authority in that in that land. God's God's way of protecting his people, the same way that he used Joseph to protect the people um, by bringing him up in, in uh, Egypt uh, when the famine came. Let's uh, see who's with us today here. Michael, good morning. 48 degrees. Ooh, it is kind of cool for Florida. Um, yeah, beautiful God handiwork. I'm assuming you're talking about the video. Yeah, Jeannie, Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Yeah, sleigh ride this morning. That that video was uh, yesterday afternoon. I had to run up to uh, the, the church in Harsha Faith uh, to run off the bulletins for um, tomorrow and for uh, the funeral on Monday and for midweek services and get all the little enter the attendance records and take care of all kinds of little fussy things that have to happen during the week. Um, and uh, one of those things is going up to the post office in Harshaw, which is uh, several miles north of the church. And uh, so I took that video when I was going up, I thought, wow, I should have, I should have turned on the camera going through this. So on the way back down, I turned on the camera and we got that two minutes of a video going going through the north woods i thought it was kind of that was kind of nice too ashley good morning leela good morning kathy good morning to you connie and robin good morning uh poor trees yeah the the pines are uh really taking it on the chin here um there were some of the you know pines tend to grow fast uh and they're they're core their stump their the main trunk doesn't get very thick and there were some um some along uh, lakeland road on the way to the church that that actually they were you know probably 40 foot tall trees but with the weight of the snow they had literally folded down and were touching the road um from the weight of the the snow on them um, you know that happens it's part of life of a tree but and boughs coming off all over the place. So, but good morning, Connie and Robin. Uh, nice intro. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought it would be kind of fun. I'll play it tomorrow, probably, or Monday, too, probably. Uh, Debbie, good morning to you and Ann. And uh, say hi to Grant if he's around there somewhere. Uh, tree crew working. Yeah, the tree that went down, you're getting that cut up. Great, great. Mushtak, good morning to you. Adam, good morning. Uh, unloading the trailer, one final load from the shop. Okay. All right. A little house cleaning, huh? Um, Renee, good morning to you, dear. Uh, Jill and John, good morning. Yeah, well, yeah, beautiful. Uh, Glenn, good morning. Jerry, good morning. Verna, good morning. I'm glad all of you are here with us. And those lurking in the background, good morning to you, those watching later, whether it's here or on the, uh, the upload on, on YouTube. Good morning. God's blessings. Glad you're here with us on this, on, well, you know, on this this beautiful uh, Saturday morning. I, You know, I, I've said it before, I don't like snow. I really don't. I hate snow. Um, I hate cleaning it up, but it does make everything look nice. Um, <clears throat> except maybe for where the plowing has been and you push up dirt and things like that. But, um, but it is, you know, you look out across the lawn or take a drive like I did yesterday and... Uh, uh, closed up today. No more shop. Just running from the trailer again starting Monday. Oh, okay. Go, taking a step backward to go forward, I hope. Um, yeah. The uh, So, yeah. It's just beautiful. And, you know, if you, if you can and if it's safe for you to do so, I mean, if you're comfortable with your driving, uh, if you're in this northern winter area, go for a drive. Enjoy it. Um, 
See the beauty. God, the, 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 the creation declares his majesty. and It is beautiful. I, I hate it. But some of those power lines, I don't know if you saw them in the video. Um, like I say, if I run it for Monday too, you can look again. But some of those power lines that are crossing the road had like that. I mean, like a, like a four-inch coating of snow around them, sleeve of, of snow around them, which was just it's like, wow. And they're sagging down because of it. All right, let's uh, enough of enough of all the fun stuff. Let's uh, get down to brass tacks here. Page two ninety five in the Lutheran Service Book, daily prayer for individuals and families. I have my treasury of daily prayer right here. I should send CPH a bill for doing that. Um, the morning order. All right, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. <laughs> Says a hymn could be sung there. I'm not singing a hymn, guys. We did that before. Our psalm this morning, Psalm 40, 1 through 5 and 16 through 17, a little chopped up here again. Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord, my God. Your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us, none can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. But may all, you who, may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. And may those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh my God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son into the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <laughs> I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Boy, you know, our, the idea of patience, of patiently, patiently waiting on the Lord, uh, as, as David is speaking of here in the psalm, not an easy thing. Right? I mean, how many of you are patient? How many of you uh, can sit quietly and wait for something? I mean, I, I, I've gotten so upset in the last two years of, over over um, my Amazon stuff, right? You remember, remember before 2020? You know, if you go back to, oh, I don't know, January, February of 2020 or, or 2019. And, and if you have an Amazon account, I know a lot of people in, in the uh, thumb of Michigan had Amazon accounts and Amazon Prime because you just you're too, too far away to get anything. And you ordered something uh, today um, and you had uh, free two-day shipping. And that didn't mean um, two weeks. That meant that you ordered it today um, you might actually, if it was in the in the Detroit Distribution Center, you might have it tomorrow. Um, but at worst, the third day, it would be in your hands. Um, and now, guaranteed, almost without a, an exception, if you go to order something on Amazon, it won't ship for a week. Uh, you order it today, and it's in in and it'll come in a week. Now, they haven't changed. It's still free two day shipping, uh, but that's from when the shipping starts, right? So how, I'm not patient. I don't like to wait for these things. Hey, Neil and Geraldine, good morning. Uh, sorry, you're not late. We're not early, but you're not late. You're with us. Uh, so we're, we're talking about patience here. Um, 
so we don't do that. We, we aren't, I'm not patient. Don't, I don't have, I don't have time to be patient. Too many things going on. He drew me up from the pit of destruction of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. So David waited patiently. I don't know that he waited patiently, really. I mean, if you read um, the book of, of, of the Kings where, where David's life is laid out for us, um, he didn't know his weight. But in the end, in the end, out, out of faithfulness, uh, he, uh, God sets him secure. Um, on his throne. Um, put a new song in my mouth, sing songs of the praises of God. Uh, many will see and fear, but put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Well, see, there it is. And, and that's probably it. It, it, it. If if we are able to be patient, which our human nature is not, think, think of Adam and Eve, right? Um, six days creation, uh, God created them. And then God said, I'm taking a nap. I'm, I'm, it's time for a rest. Everybody's going to rest. It took me six days and my labor was complete. Now I'm going to rest. I'm, all the world, all creation should rest. And and, and uh, Father God, the creator, uh, sat down to rest. And uh, I'm speaking figuratively here. But um, and, and what did man do? Well, in his impatience, he rose up and ate of the fruit of the, center, of, the, of the tree in the center of the garden, which he was not supposed to do. Uh, but, but blessed is the man who puts it, the Lord, makes the Lord his trust, uh, not going after the proud or those who go astray after a lie, because we do. That's where our patience comes from, is from God. If we can be patient, it's because God has made us patient. Um, you have multiplied, O oh Lord, my God, your wondrous deeds, your thoughts, your toward us. It, it, you know, the, the, what's contained in the Holy Scriptures, John, John says it best at the end of his gospel. There are many other things uh, that, that the Christ did, that Jesus did, uh, but these are written so that you may believe. And I think the same thing can be said of the entire entirety of the Scriptures. The, the things that God has done for his creation are too manifold, too many to count. Um, uh, multiplied beyond all deed, his, his wondrous deeds and his and his thoughts. Um, no one can compare with them. Um, no one can tell all of them, uh, but he did them for for us, for his creation. Um, but it, but may those who love your salvation can continue, say continually, "Great is the Lord! Great is the Lord! Great is the Lord!" Amen. Let's uh, let's go to our reading here from Isaiah. Um, Isaiah 33, 1 to 24. I'm, I, you know, guys, I'm moving on with trepidation here because I, I think this has been a good exercise. We've been working since, um, since Easter on these Old Testament readings. And, and I, I think my opinion, but it's been good because some of them aren't that easy to understand. Even I've struggled and I you know I remember I don't go I don't go preparing for this we just look at the text and and take it to where it's at um this isn't necessarily bible study but this is what is god saying to us and um it it's certainly easier in the new testament to um follow that but in the old testament it, it's a, it's a bit more of a challenge and and the parts of isaiah we've been reading are definitely a challenge so let's look here at isaiah 33 1 through 24. Ah, you destroyer, who yourself have not been destroyed, you traitor, whom no none has betrayed. When you have ceased to destroy, you will be destroyed. And when you have finished betraying, they will betray you. O oh Lord, be gracious to us. We wait for you. Be our arm every morning, our salvation in the time of trouble. At the tumultuous noise, peoples flee. When you lift yourself up, nations are scattered, and your spoil is gathered as the caterpillar gathers. As locusts leap, it is leapt upon. The Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. He will fill Zion with justice and righteousness, and he will be the stability of your times. Abundance of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. Behold, their heroes cry in the streets, the, the envoys of peace weep bitterly. 
The highways lie waste, the traveler ceases. Covenants are broken, cities are despised. There is no regard for man. The land mourns and languishes. Lebanon is confounded and withers away. Sharon is like a desert, and Bashan and Carmel shake off their leaves. Now I will arise, says the Lord. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. You conceive chaff. You give birth to stubble. Your breath is a fire that will consume you. And the peoples will be as if burned to lime, like thorns cut down that are burned in the fire. Hear you who are far off what I have done, and you who are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid, trembling has seized the godless. Who among us can dwell with a consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with everlasting burnings? He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, who despises the gain of opp oppressions, who shakes his hands lest they hold a bribe, who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed and shuts his eyes from looking on evil. He will dwell on the heights. His place of defense will be the fortress of rocks. His bread will be given him. His water will be sure. Your eyes will behold the king in his beauty. They will see a land that stretches afar. Your heart will muse in, on the terror. Where is he who counted? Where is he who weighed the tribute? Where is he who counted the towers? You will see no more the insolent people, the people of an obscure speech that you cannot comprehend, stammering in a tongue that you cannot understand. Behold, Zion, the city of our appointed feasts, your eyes will see Jerusalem, an untroubled habitation, an un immovable tent, whose stakes will never be plucked up, nor will any of its cords be broken. But there the Lord in majesty will be for us, a place of broad rivers and streams, where no galley with oars can go, nor majestic ship can pass. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. Your cords hang loose, they cannot hold the mast firm in its place, or keep the sail spread out. Then prey and spoil and abundance will be divided. Even the lame will take the prey, and no inhabitant will say, I am sick. The people who dwell there will be forgiven their iniquity. Glory be to the Father. Oh, no, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, no. Oh, no. What is this all about? Ah, you destroyer. You who yourself have not been destroyed. You traitor who none has betrayed. When you cease to destroy, you will be destroyed. And when you have finished betraying, they will betray you. Boy, guys, this is some stuff. Um, I'm doing it again. I'm, I'm opening opening my software to take a look here at, at what this is because... Uh, I am, I am, I just, I just, I don't even know where to start with it. You know, when I do this, I worry that it turns into, it turns more into a Bible study than, than, um, than anything else. But, um, uh, okay. Well, all right, I can buy that. So this. Um, these first, this first verse talking about destroyer, betrayer, um, well, wisdom here says that it is, um, it is a, it is a point to Assyria, which is the kingdom that overcomes Israel to the north, and Israel never rises again after that, um, and uh, also to Babylon um, in the south. Now I'm I'm using I'll I'll put this up here for you guys if I can find the uh, right button. There we go. Um, right here, I had a I had a new tool on here that would let me draw on. Here we go. Draw on the screen. So here, here, right here. Um, this is the true of Assyria, and later it will be true of Babylon. Um, the Lord will use 
Babylon to judge Judah. Um, but afterward, see here, afterward, uh, Babylon too will be judged. Um, the attack on Zion was unprovoked. Lust for conquest motivated the enemy. God, however, God is, has, God, here we go. God has him on a leash, right? God is using, um, God is using, God is using, uh, I wish there was a function key for, the, oh, there is, F8, okay. Um, God, God has him on a leash. I like that. Um, God has, God has Babylon and Assyria on a leash. So, uh, even, even if, um, uh, even if they, they do these things, God's in control on a leash. I, that's, that's nice imagery on a leash. Um, the people, the trader trusted the payer, tra the trader will be, uh, betrayed. Oh, and it says, says Habakkuk here. Habakkuk, oops, 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 let's go back. Let's go back here. I can't go back. Now we're in Habakkuk. How do we do that? All right, here we go. Um, Habakkuk 2, shall not all these take up their taunt against him with scoffing and riddles and say, woe to him who heaps what is an out boy. Old Testament stuff here. So yeah, so the, the, the that first part is pointing back to um, God's vengeance against those who assaulted Israel. Even though, even though God uses Assyria and Babylon to, um, I'm going to say punish, to show his wrath to uh, his people, they too uh, will suffer wrath for having assaulted his people. Right? It might look good at the it might look good at the outset, but in the end, it doesn't. You know, I, I was listening to um uh, to a man talking the other day, and he said nobody ever gets away with anything, and that's true. Nobody ever gets. You know, you might you might pull something off and think you're getting away with it, um, but down the road somewhere, that will have an impact on something else you do. So you never really get away with anything. Um, it all comes back, and that's what happens to Assyria. So um, then, then we turn in verse 2 to God's graciousness. Be gracious to us. We wait for you. There's that, there's that patience. Um, be our arm every morning. Uh, our salvation in the time of trouble. Well, and this is God's strong arm. Um, at, at, at lifting yourself up, nations are scattered, and when you, and, and your spoil is gathered as a Caterpillar gathers as locusts leap, it's leapt upon. The Lord is exalted. Well, and, and, and God is gracious to his people. You know, I, oh, county, county truck, or township truck is going by, cleaning off the road. Um, we, go to, we go a little further on here to verse 10, and here, here the Lord speaks now. Now I will arise, says the Lord. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. Think about that for a minute in the context of um, the season we're going into. Um, we are uh, we're going into the time of the birth of Christ, and um, that time is the exaltation of God. Right, um, the the Son of God humbles Himself. Right, we call it the humiliation of God by taking on flesh and becoming a, a human being like you and I, except without sin. Um, so that uh, 33 years later, um, he will be raised on the cross, right? Uh, it's Christ himself says, that says, even as Moses lifted up the serpent, so the son of, son of man must be lifted up. Um, and that is the exaltation of God. That's the exaltation of God because he comes to save us. He is uh, gracious to us. He is our arm and our salvation in every time of trouble. Um, now I will arise, says the Lord. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. Um, everything that was is as of nothing. You, you conceive chaff. You give birth to stubble. Your breath is fire that will consume you, and the peoples will be burned in lime as it's burned to lime and thorns cut down, as if burned with a fire. Here you are far off. Here you hear you who are near. Acknowledge my might. And, and it goes on to say here um, that the treasure 
where was that? The treasure of Zion. Sinners of Zion. Behold Zion, the city of our appointed feast. Your eyes will see Jerusalem. Um, uh, your tent, your tent will be sure, and your cords will not stumble. Where was this? Because I saw, I can't find it now. Um, who among us can dwell with everlasting burnings? He who walks upright, walks righteously, and speaks uprightly, despises, shuts out dwelling. Bread will give, and behold, it can do it. Well, okay. Um, hmm. Well, I lost it. It was here somewhere. Now I'm going to have to. That's the thing is sometimes I see things and then I can't find them again. Um, ah, here it is. It was in verse six. Um, and he will be the stability of your times, abundance of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. Right? The fear of the Lord is, is that he is God and that we are beholding to him in all things. Um, he will make sure that the tent and the sails of the one who trusts in him, but the rest, um, behold Zion, the city of your appointed feast, whose stakes will never be plucked up, nor will any of its cords be broken. But there the Lord in majesty will be for us, a place of broad rivers and streams. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. Your cords, back to the destroyers and to others, those outside of Christ, your cords hang loose, they cannot hold the mast firm or keep the sail in. Um, then prey and spoil in abundance will be divided. Even the lame will take the prey. Uh, it's, it's big big stuff. And it's not Saturday morning stuff. Um, this is the trust. And this is the patience that we are that we are in Christ. And we know that in Christ all things have been fulfilled. And that in Christ all things for us have been fulfilled. And that God brings us uh, to that to that uh, high place, to that rock, the rock of our salvation. And, and there he keeps us. Um, dwelling in the heights, a place of defense, the fortress of the rocks, bread will be given to him. That's the food of life. Water will be sure. Water is necessary to sustain life. And these are all the things. Your eyes will behold the king in his beauty, and they will see a land that stretches afar. That's the promise we have in Christ. In the in the better than better than all the snow that covers the ground and looks beautiful, better than a than a trip through the north woods after a snowstorm. Uh, more beautiful and more wondrous will be the the kingdom of God hereafter, um, and our life is guaranteed in it through the blood of Christ shed on the cross. That's where we call it today. Amen. Let's go to our prayer of the day. Lord God, heavenly Father, you rescued. Daniel from the lion's den and the three young men from the fiery furnace through the miraculous intervention of an angel. Save us now through the presence of Jesus, the lion of Judah, who has conquered all our enemies through his blood and taken away all our sins as the lamb of God who now reigns from his heavenly throne with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> when we continue with the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, <clears throat> and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father, Almighty. From thence, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are <clears throat> bold to pray as he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For ourselves and others on this Saturday morning, gracious Father, 
caretaker of my soul and protector of my life. I come to you this morning seeking your guidance for the day. I need you every moment as I go about my work or seek re recreation. Let all I say and do give evidence to my loyalty to you as my, in, in my devoted love for the Savior, who has redeemed me and brought me to faith as a member of his church. Give me the courage to lift high the banner of the cross through the sincere profession of my faith and the high standard of my Christian life. Let my chief concern be to give of my time and thought and possession to the building of your church. Permit nothing to keep me from worshiping you in your sanctuary tomorrow and confessing your Son as my Savior and Lord each and every day. In your presence, let me find forgiveness and peace. Help me to put you in the very center of all my interests for the sake of my Redeemer who died on the cross because he loved me. In his name I pray. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, keep all those who have jobs that are dangerous, safe in this time. Especially this day, we pray for those who are cutting up the tree in the backyard of Deb and Grant and Ann. We ask, Lord, that all who work uh, be kept safe. For you have given, given us the, the gift of work uh, by which we earn our daily bread. Lord, be with those who are sick or suffering this day. Especially we pray for Pat, Lois, Ann, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Ezra, Neely, and all who call upon your most holy name. Strengthen them, Lord, in every good work that they do and give them comfort and assurance that your promises are true. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and that wisdom is that you have saved us through Christ. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that all our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, that ends our devotion for this Saturday morning. Uh, God's peace be with you. Uh, find your way to church tomorrow one way or another. Receive the gifts that God has given to you in, in the grace and uh, love of his son, Jesus Christ, crucified and raised for you. God's peace, and we'll see you on Monday. If I can find the right button. Here we go. God's peace.